Well, our lead story tonight, the Prime Minister is currently chairing a review meeting on COVID with Chief Ministers of States amid the Omicron scare. This is a high-level meeting with the centre issuing an advisory today saying don't let your guard down. But just look at the visuals we can see. Just today in the day, the Prime Minister is at a rally of thousands in Varanasi, his constituency. So as you can see, while they're on a stage, no one's wearing masks. And in the crowd, very, very few wearing masks. And it's a crowd of thousands so in the evening. A COVID review meeting, the center selling states, uh, don't let your guard down, have restrictions. New Year's gatherings cancelled in many states, but there's no such uh, buyout on political rallies. In fact, even Akhilesh Yadav, whose wife and daughter have tested positive, is now in quarantine, though he's tested negative. But the rallies of the Samajwadi party is going on again. So double standards. On the one hand, ordinary citizens have to be careful, and that's right, given Omicron's fear. But there's no problem for political rallies going ahead. Political rallies today in Uttar Pradesh with almost zero COVID appropriate behavior despite officials fearing lacks of daily cases because of the growing Omicron threat. Hardly any COVID norms were followed at the PM's Varanasi event. Attended by thousands of unmasked people tightly packed together at the venue. Even Mr. Modi and UP Chief Minister Adityanath were filmed unmasked at multiple times during the two-hour event. The Prime Minister's repeated visits to UP even before the elections are announced, he has spent 12 of the last 37 days in the state, have coincided with rising worry over the Omicron variant. But each of the Prime Minister's events, all organised by the government, have seen violations of COVID protocols, few masks, and little social distancing. सबसे कहा गया था और यहाँ लोगों को मास्क बिक्री भी किया जा रहा है। ये जरूरी था कि मास्क लगा के आइए। लेकिन लोग मास्क लगाए हुए बहुत लोग नहीं दिखाई दे रहे हैं। हम उनसे जाके कह भी रहे हैं कि आप मास्क लगाइए। मास्क लगाना मत। लापरवाही है हमारी भी खुद की लापरवाही है और सब प्रशासन की भी from East UP to the West in Aligarh, huge maskless crowds at this joint Samajwadi Party RLD joint rally. Although Akhilesh Yadav skipped this rally last minute as his wife and daughter tested positive for coronavirus, the attendance ran into lakhs and no COVID guidelines were followed. Barely any masks, no temperature checks and no social distancing. When asked about COVID protocol, extremely bizarre responses from both the public and the organizers. The Samajwadi Party chief has even refused to get vaccinated, saying he will only get the jab when the Prime Minister's photo is removed from the vaccination certificate. In the last two months, the main parties, the BJP, BSP and even the Congress have organised crowded political events, but ensured little COVID-appropriate behaviour. While UP reported just 21 fresh COVID cases on Wednesday and the overall active COVID cases in the state are just about 200, the reproduction factor in the state at over 1 as versus the All India average of 0.96 is a worry and indicates that there could be a rise. This is something that our netas need to worry about right now. With Ajay Singh, Meher Pandey and Vineet Verma, this is Alok Pandey, NDTV. And we can now see a trend of daily cases rising amid the Omicron threat. So the cases in the last 24 hours are 7,495, up 15.72%. Now deaths are also up 26%. However, there was a backlog of deaths being reported by states. The good news is that vaccinations are also up at over 70 lakhs. Tests are up very slightly. We need to ramp those up. But here's the worrying trend. How much COVID cases are actually going up in our major cities? Let's just look at that. So if you can see in Delhi, 
There's a 98% change in the last seven days. Uh, in the last seven days, 665 cases, that's a 98% change. Look at Mumbai, there's an 89% change. In the last seven days, we've added 2,816 cases. Chennai is uh, much less at just a 6% change in the last week. Bengaluru also has just has a 2% cha uh, change. The case is 721. And the Delhi chief minister today had a press conference say that, saying that Delhi is ready. He said, in fact, that we are prepared for even up to 1 lakh cases daily. He said the focus will be, since the reports are that Omicron is mild, on home isolation. Omicron ki mote mote taur pe do characteristics hain. Ek to ye ki ye felta bhot teji se. Dusra ye ki ye kafi mild hai. Isme hospitalizations kam hote hain. Mote bhi kafi kam hoti hain. Is bar humne apni tayari ki hai ek lakh cases per day. Agar hote hain to uske liye bhi hum पूरा हमने तैयारी उसके हिसाब से की है चिंता करने के बाद जरूरत नहीं है हम सब साथ हैं सो द मेन फोकस डोंट पैनिक बट बी केयरफुल दैट ऑफ कोर्स इज इफ यू आर अ सिटीजन नॉट अ पॉलिटिशियन हु इज नो कॉशन एट ऑल एट दिस टाइम बट विशिका व्हाट इज द लेटेस्ट अपडेट्स ग्लोबली एज़ वेल ऑन ओमिक्रॉन एंड कोविड व्हाट्स हैपनिंग इन इंडिया well, absolutely. As the Prime Minister is chairing this crucial meet on the COVID situation in India, states, of course, have been asked to observe precautions and not let their guard down. But the big question that everyone is asking is when is India going to intervene and announce booster shots for the vulnerable population? Remember, the World Health Organization has changed its stance on boosters now. The World Health Organization chief earlier called boosters a scandal. Now, the WHO is recommending boosters for quote-unquote a targeted population. What has the World Health Organization said? It has said, give boosters. It has to be evidence-driven, the approach. Blanket booster programs cannot uh, be possible because it will only prolong the pandemic. But a big shift in the stance of the WHO, will India pick up the queue, is the big question. Meanwhile, the second indication that booster shots are the need of the hour, a major announcement by AstraZeneca and Oxford University today. Three doses of AstraZeneca significantly boosts antibodies against Omicron. This is something that AstraZeneca themselves are claiming at the moment. What has this study essentially said? The study essentially says that three doses of AstraZeneca against Am Omicron work as good as two doses against Delta. So if we have to beat Omicron, top officials at AstraZeneca are saying they are confident that a third dose, a booster dose, needs to be given. Thanks so much, uh, Rishika, for that. And also, of course, some good news coming out of initial studies on how serious Omicron is effects actually are, how it works clinically. Sonal has the update on that. As the Omicron figures continue to rise in India and across the world, the real question on everybody's mind, how severe is Omicron? Now, there seems to be three new studies coming in which do indicate that Omicron is in fact a weaker variant, though this is just initial data, remember. A real-world coronavirus cases data in uh, Britain has talked about how Omicron variant appears to be less severe than Delta. Early evidence that they've picked up from Scotland, England suggests that Omicron is sending fewer people to the hospital. But is that happening because of the vaccines? What about the unvaccinated people? What about those without the booster dose? Well, experts at the moment are worried that Omicron could still flood hospitals with very sick patients. South Africa, uh, meanwhile, 80% they're seeing less likely to be hospitalized with the Omicron variant compared to the other strains. That's what is coming from one of their studies. South Africa, very similar to the Indian terrain as well. Is that something we really need to brace for? That's something that the debate is still on. Sonal Mehrotra Kapoor, NDTV. So some initial good news there and more good news coming in that the U.S. Uh, Food and Drugs Administration, FDA, has cleared another pill to be used against severe disease of uh, COVID, against severe symptoms of COVID that's made by Merck. So that news just coming in. And meanwhile, the stock markets were higher today for the third straight session, mainly because of news coming from those studies we just reported that indicate that the Omicron variant could be milder than feared. So the stock markets, as is globally, taking those cues and closing upwards in the green today. Well, moving to the other big headline tonight, and this actually is really worrying. A blast in the court complex of Punjab's Ludhiana, 
one person has been killed. It was a pretty high intensity blast. So the chief minister has been there and has bizarrely linked this blast to the FR filed against a Kalida leader, Bikram Majita, just a few days ago. The Akalis have condemned the statement. The BJP and the Kong, uh, the BJP and uh, Amrinder Singh's new party have all condemned the blast today, but the Chief Justice also raising serious concern. A blast inside the district court complex in Ludhiana has left one person dead and five injured. suspect body identify impact explosive preliminary out of They are okay. The blast took place on the second floor of the district court. The intensity was so severe that walls and window panes of vehicles parked outside the court were shattered. The blast occurred hours before the chief minister was scheduled to address a rally in Ludhiana. And it comes just days after the sacrilege and lynching case in Amritsar, ahead of the elections. Sanu lagda hai ke aunaliya chona nu dekhe, arajik ta phalaundi Punjab de vich koshish hai. Is de piche kedi agency hai, ya koi da gang hai ya kya hai, ode baare tehki ka chal rahi hai. Ye nakarak. नकारात्मक राजनीति की प्रकाष्ठा है कि बेकसूर लोगों की जाने ली जा रही हैं वोट्स की पोलराइजेशन के लिए The opposition gearing up for elections attacked the Congress government लेकिन दुर्भाग्य है कि पंजाब की सरकार बार बार जो उनको वार्निंग जा रही हैं उसके बावजूद पंजाब की सुरक्षा पर जितनी स्तरकता देनी चाहिए थी, सीमाओं पर जितनी स्तरकता रखनी चाहिए थी, वहाँ कहीं नहीं। The center has sent a team from top anti-terror agency NIA to investigate the matter. With Mohammad Ghazali, Rishika Barwa, NDTV. Let's go across live now to Ghazali because Ghazali, this really is worrying. First, we had those two incidents of alleged sacrilege and then lynching, and now we've got this blast. All this just before elections. What are the details that uh, the state administration, the police are telling you, and now this uh, chief minister linking this to an FIR against uh, Bikram Majitia? Yeah, certainly. This incident happened here. Visually, I'll show you. This is the court complex. The security has been beefed up after the incident. And uh, on, on the second floor of this building, uh, the blast happened at around 12, 12.30, between 12 and 12.30 in today afternoon. Uh, as of now, the debris is getting cleared by the police. The dead body is still there. They don't want to remove the dead body to ascertain whether the person who has died, was he responsible or was he planning to trigger the blast? and in that particular process he died or whether he was close to the blast site and that's why he died. So these are certain details which the police is trying to ascertain. NIA and the forensic team of NSG also visited the spot. They also collected some evidences from here. But as far as the political reaction is concerned, certainly a bizarre reaction from Punjab CM linking this entire incident, the blast incident with sacrilege and uh, with the bail application hearing which was scheduled today for Bikram Majithia in Mohali court saying that it appears to him that it is a long-drawn conspiracy to disturb the peace and uh, 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 peace in Punjab. As of now, uh, the police is working in co close coordination with the NIA because NIA will be taking over this case of the blast. And in many such cases in the past, NIA, NIA is monitoring the blast cases of Punjab. Right. And this is also reminiscent of what happened in the previous polls, in previous assembly polls in 2017, when a, a similar blast has happened in Bhatinda two days ahead of the voting. And that probe is a still not over. So certainly people are expecting that due to this blast, the probes should speed up no, and before Zari, polls an or voting point. happens, very the worrying Punjab that we police see or the government will... Of mob violence, we see this incidence of the blast. Who's behind this attempt to actually create tension in the sensitive state, the border state of Punjab, just before elections? Thanks so much for that update. So the probe needs the report to be out, actually. There's no point waiting for it for five years. Meanwhile, this is also a huge threat to India's national and internal security. These videos have gone viral in Uttarakhand's Hardwar of people in saffron robes with the most vile, communal hate speech calling for violence against minorities. But the organizer of that event hasn't been arrested. And look why. 
the chief minister, this is an undated photograph, touching the feet of the man who organized this hateful event. Remember, of course, that comedians have been arrested often for statements they didn't make. But here on camera, video after video has people calling for violence against minorities, threatening to kill them, advocating for ethnic cleansing. Yet on the other side, the chief minister touching the feet of that organizer who told NDTV today that I'm not afraid of the constitution. I will take up arms if I need to. The viral videos that have horrified India of a hate filled event in the holy city of Haridwar. Three days of calls of genocidal violence against Muslims. It's drawn condemnation from former defense chiefs with a former navy chief tweeting, Why is this not being stopped? With our jawans facing enemies on two fronts, do we want a communal bloodbath, domestic turmoil and international disgrace? Even former tennis star Martina Navratilova tweeted, what is going on? And yet, three days since the event, no action against them. Police officials simply told NDTV they are monitoring the situation. The police have made a look at it and we have made a look at it and we have made a look at it and we will do it. The organizers are at large, many of them flaunting their BJP connections on social media. Here is one of them blessing the Chief Minister of Uttarakhand, Pushkar Dhami, and with the UP Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath. The same sadhu seen here making a violent speech. When we met the hate mongers, they expressed no remorse at what they said or had any fear of arrest. आपुराना Many of the organizers or those present on stage already have cases against them, like the hate mongering religious leader Yati Narasimhanan. Also seen in the videos, BJP leader Ashwini Upadhyay, who is out on bail in the Jantar Mantar hate speech case in Delhi. It's been four to five days. There is no action against these people who have given hate speeches. Is it because these people have close political connections with the people who are running the government in Uttarakhand and Uttar Pradesh? They are directly challenging the constitution of India and law. But no action against these people. In Haridwar with Ashok Mahale, Adnan and Rahul Kumar, Saurabh Shukla for NDTV. Meanwhile, in Karnataka's assembly, the focus is an anti-conversion bill. It has a 10-year jail term for allegedly illegal conversions. It also has a uh, very tough provision for interfaith marriages. Yet, this bill was passed, ironically, on the same day that a church was attacked in Karnataka. In fact, the data actually shows that what's on the rise in Karnataka is attacks against churches, not conversions. An early morning shock for those connected to the St. Joseph's Church in Karnataka's Chikbalapura district. A parishioner saw that a statue of St. Anthony near the over 100-year-old church had been damaged and called the priest. This on a day when the Karnataka Assembly was debating the new Karnataka Protection of Right to Freedom of Religion Bill 2021. Legislation the ruling BJP wants to introduce to closely monitor conversion. Legislation that some members of the minority communities feel could be a license for harassment. I'm very saddened to inform you that this morning, 
some unidentified person had broken the statue of St. Anthony. By 6.30 we rushed to the spot and found that that his head and baby Jesus was broken with a huge stone. Police have registered a fire case on those unidentified person. In recent weeks in Karnataka, there have been several cases of intimidation of Christian gatherings. Moral police again. Yeshtun the cases Ali Bajrangdal Hindutva groups are going and stopping the prayers. Ekandre Yuru Matantra Madre Auro Tadia Kokter. Matantra Madhur in the Tadia Kokta. Matantra and Madre Tadia Kokta Prasna Irtirla. Hagagi in Mele Kanon Yaru Kaikam Lakandre Policy Tilser Policy immediate hook action thrown. It isn't just the political opposition who has been against the bill. Protests have been taken out on the streets too against the bill, which critics say will create an atmosphere conducive to intimidation of minorities. With Srija, Maya Sharma for NDTV. Moving now to what's probably a first. Well, Amazon has sued a probe agency, the Enforcement Directorate. They've gone to court saying that the Enforcement Directorate is carrying out a fishing and roving investigation. They went to the Delhi High Court after the Enforcement Directorate as, uh, which is currently carrying out a foreign exchange violation probe in the deal with Future Retail. ED has already issued summons to eight senior Amazon executives in the Future Deal probe. Amazon told the Delhi High Court there's no jurisdiction and unnecessary harassment. The Delhi High Court will hear Amazon's plea against the ED in January 2022. The ED has said they're not responding because it's subjudice.